Unless otherwise noted, statements in this article refer to Standard Finnish, which is based on the dialect spoken in the former Haim province in central South Finland. Standard Finnish is used by professional speakers, such as reporters and news presenters on television. Vowels The close vowels, i, y, u, are similar to the corresponding cardinal vowels i, y, u. The mid vowels are phonetically mid e, o stroke, o. The open front unrounded vowel, a, is phonetically near open a. The unrounded open vowel transcribed in IPA with has been variously described as near open back and open central. Finnish makes phonemic contrasts between long and short vowels, even in unstressed syllables, though long mid vowels are more common in unstressed syllables. Each short monophthong has a long counterpart with no real difference in acoustic quality. Long vowels are phonemically perceived as two identical vowels in succession, and vowel length is not a phonemic quality akin to vowel height. Topic. Diphthongs The table below lists the conventionally recognized diphthongs in Finnish. In speech i.e. phonetically speaking a diphthong does not sound like a sequence of two different vowels, instead, the sound of the first vowel gradually glides into the sound of the second one with full vocalization lasting through the whole sound. That is to say, the two portions of the diphthong are not broken by a pause or stress pattern. In Finnish, diphthongs are considered phonemic units, contrasting with both long vowels and with short vowels. Phonologically, however, Finnish diphthongs usually are analyzed as sequences this in contrast to languages like English, where the diphthongs are best analyzed as independent phonemes. Diphthongs ending in I can occur in any syllable, but those ending in rounded vowels usually occur only in initial syllables, and rising diphthongs are confined to that syllable. It is usually taught that diphthongization occurs only with the combinations listed. However, there are recognized situations in which other vowel pairs diphthongize. For example, in rapid speech the word wylosa upper part, from wyla, upper plus osa, part can be pronounced wylio, s with the diphthong, ao. The usual pronunciation is le, os with those vowels belonging to separate syllables. The diphthongs e and i are quite rare and mostly found in derivative words, where a derivational affix starting with y, or properly the vowel harmonic archiphoneme u, fuses with the preceding vowel, e.g. pimes darkness from pimea dark plus u us ness and sishitya to tidy up oneself from sisti tidy plus utu, a kind of middle voice plus d a infinitive suffix. Older, asterisk e, and, asterisk i, in initial syllables have been shifted to o and y. Opening diphthongs are in standard Finnish only found in root initial syllables like in words tita to know, takapiora rear wheel from taka back, rear plus pia wheel, the latter part is secondarily stressed or luo towards. This might make them easier to pronounce as true opening diphthongs uo, i.e., Y O stroke in some accents even wider opening U I tilde I ash Y ash and not as centering diphthongs U I Y which are more common in the world's languages. The opening diphthongs come from earlier long mid vowels asterisk O greater than U O asterisk E greater than I E asterisk O stroke greater than Y O stroke. Since that time, new long mid vowels have come to the language from various sources. Among the phonological processes operating in Finnish dialects are diphthongization and diphthong reduction. For example, Savo Finnish has the phonemic contrast of versus u versus instead of standard language contrast of versus versus u. Topic: <laughs> Vowel harmony. Finnish, like many other Uralic languages, has the phenomenon called vowel harmony, which restricts the co-occurrence in a word of vowels belonging to different articulatory subgroups. Vowels within a word harmonize to be either all front or all back. In particular, no native noncompound word can contain vowels from the group a, o, u together with vowels from the group a, o, y. Vowel harmony affects inflectional suffixes and derivational suffixes, which have two forms, one for use with back vowels, and the other with front vowels. Compare, for example, the following pair of abstract nouns, halitus government from halita, terrain, versus terviz health from terv, healthy. 
There are exceptions to the constraint of vowel harmony. For one, there are two front vowels that lack back counterparts, i, and e. Therefore, words like kello clock with a front vowel in a non-final syllable and tuli wind with a front vowel in the final syllable, which contain i, or e, together with a back vowel, count as back vowel words, i, and e, are effectively neutral in regard to vowel harmony in such words. Kello and tuli yield the inflectional forms kellasa in a clock and tulesa in a wind. In words containing only neutral vowels, front vowel harmony is used, e.g. tai, tiela, road, on the road. For another, compound words do not have vowel harmony across the compound boundary, e.g. sinakello, wall clock, from sena, wall, and kello, clock, has back, o, co-occurring with front, a. In the case of compound words, the choice between back and front suffix alternance is determined by the immediately preceding element of the compound, e.g. in a wall clock is sinakelasa, not sinakelasa. A particular exception appears in a standard Finnish word, talinen, this kind of. Although by definition a singular word, it was originally a compound word that transitioned over time to a more compact and easier form, tamanlajinen from tamin, of this, and lajinen, kind, tanlinen talinen, and further to tala i, nen for some non-standard speech. New loan words may exhibit vowel disharmony, for example, olympialacet Olympic Games and secundarinen secondary have both front and back vowels. In standard Finnish, these words are pronounced as they are spelled, but many speakers apply vowel harmony, olympialacet, and secundarinen or secundarinen. Consonants For most speakers, t, is dental t, whereas, n, and, d, are alveolar, d, may sometimes be closer to a flap or tap, than a true plosive d, and the dialectal realization varies widely, it is increasingly common to pronounce it as a true plosive, however. See the section below. In native vocabulary it is the equivalent of t, under weakening consonant gradation, and thus it occurs only word medially, either by itself e.g. shade rain, cf, sataa to rain, or in the cluster, hd, e.g. lada fountain, spring, source, cf, la t to depart. In recent loanwords and technical vocabulary the sound can occur somewhat freely e.g. adictio, adverbi, anecdota, boulevardi, demoni, formaldehyde, sandali, likewise in slang vocabulary e.g. dorka, idiot, condis, condition. S, is frequently retracted alveolar s. The glottal stop can appear at certain morpheme boundaries, the same ones as the gemination described further down as a result of certain sandy phenomena, and it is not normally indicated in spelling at the end of a word, e.g. nn all, let it be, orthographically ana ala. Moreover, this sound is not used in all dialects. However, word internally, it can be indicated by an apostrophe, which can occur when a k is lost between similar vowels, e.g. vaaka scales vaan scales gen .sg. The velar nasal is also heavily limited in occurrence in native vocabulary, it is found only word medially, either in the consonant cluster, k, written nk, or as geminate, written ng, the latter being the counterpart of the former under consonant gradation type of lenition. In recent loanwords, may also occur in other environments, e.g. magnaeti per meter ni tti pingvini, pini, f appears in native words only in the southwestern dialects, but is reliably distinguished by Finnish speakers. Other foreign fricatives are not, s or shish, appears only in non-native words, sometimes pronounced s, although most speakers make a distinction between e.g. saki chess and saki a gang of people. The orthography also includes the letters z and z, although their use is marginal, and they have no phonemic status. For example, azeri and zonki may be pronounced seri and soki without fear of confusion. The letter Z, found mostly in foreign words and names such as Zulu, may also be pronounced as T, S following the influence of German, thus Zulu, T, Sulu. The phoneme, H, has glottal and fricative allophones. In general, at the end of a syllable it is pronounced as a fricative whose place of articulation is similar to the preceding vowel, velar X after a back vowel, A O U, palatal C after a high front vowel, I Y. Between vowels a breathy or murmured, can occur, Vima vikam, lighty, like t. Mati mixti, comb, coxmi, tucka, tuxka. Maha m. Topic: Voiced plosives. 
Traditionally, b and were not counted as Finnish phonemes, since they appear only in loanwords. However, these borrowings being relatively common, they are nowadays considered part of the educated norm. The failure to use them correctly is often ridiculed in the media, e.g. if a news reporter or a high official consistently and publicly realizes Belgia Belgium as Pelkia. Even many educated speakers, however, still make no distinction between voiced and voiceless plosives in regular speech if there is no fear of confusion. Minimal pairs do exist, bus I, a bus versus bus I, a bag, oral, a gorilla versus coral, on a basket. The status of d is somewhat different from b and since it also appears in native Finnish words as a regular weak correspondence of the voiceless t. See consonant gradation below. Historically, this sound was a fricative. Th is in English the varyingly spelled as d or dh in Old Literary Finnish. Its realization as a plosive originated as a spelling pronunciation, in part because when mass elementary education was instituted in Finland, the spelling D in Finnish texts was mispronounced as a plosive, under the influence of how Swedish speakers would pronounce this letter. In the close to seven centuries during which Finland was under first Swedish, then Russian rule, Swedish speakers dominated the government and economy. Initially, few native speakers of Finnish acquired the foreign plosive realization of the native phoneme. As for loanwords, d was often assimilated to t. Even well into the 20th century it was not entirely exceptional to hear loanwords like deodoranti a deodorant pronounced as teodoranti, while native Finnish words with a d were pronounced in the usual dialectal way. Due to diffusion of the standard language through mass media and basic education, and due to the dialectal prestige of the capital area, the plosive d can now be heard in all parts of the country, at least in loanwords and informal speech. Topic. Consonant gradation Consonant gradation is the term used for a set of alternations which pervade the language, between a strong grade and a weak grade. These alternations are always conditioned by both phonology and morphosyntax. The phonological factor which triggers the weak grade is the syllable structure of closed syllable. However, there are contexts where weak grade fails to occur in a closed syllable, and there are contexts where the weak grade occurs in an open syllable. Morphosyntactically, the weak grade occurs in nominals nouns, pronouns, adjectives usually only before case suffixes, and in verbs usually only before person agreement suffixes. The following is a general list of strong weak correspondences. Other consonant alternations Many of the remaining irregular patterns of Finnish noun and verb inflection are explained by a change of a historical asterisk t to c. The change from asterisk t to c, a type of assimilation, is unconnected to consonant gradation, and dates back as early as Proto Finnic. In modern Finnish the alternation is not productive, due to new cases of the sequence, t, having been introduced by later sound changes and loanwords, and assimilation therefore occurs only in certain morphologically defined positions. Words having this particular alternation are still subject to consonant gradation in forms that lack assimilation. Finnish words may thus have two, and sometimes three stems. A word such as vesi water sg, nam, may produce vidin sg, gen, vedina sg, s, vesissa place inis, because the change from t to s has only occurred in front of i. When a vowel other than i occurs, words like vesi inflect just like other nouns with a single t alternating with the consonant gradated d. This pattern has, however, been reverted in some cases. Variation appears in particular in past tense verb forms, e.g. kilta, kilsi to deny, denied, but sada, sati to adjust, adjusted. Both alternate forms kilti and sasi can also be found in dialects. Apparently this was caused by word pairs such as nota, nuti bring, and nusta, nusi rise, which were felt important enough to keep them contrastive. Assimilation occurred prior to the change of the original consonants cluster asterisk kt to ht, which can be seen in the inflection of the numerals yksi and kaksi, yhden, kaden. In many recent loanwords, there is vacillation between representing an original voiceless consonant as single or geminate, this is the case for example calcium and cantarelli. 
The orthography generally favors the single form, if it exists. More completely assimilated loans such as Farsi, Minuti, Oapara generally have settled on geminates. Length All phonemes including and j, c below can occur doubled phonemically as a phonetic increase in length. Consonant doubling always occurs at the boundary of a syllable in accordance with the rules of Finnish syllable structure. Some example sets of words Tuli fire, tuli wind, tuli customs Muda mud, muda other partitive sg, muda but muda to change or to move a double, h, is rare in standard Finnish, but possible, e.g. hahuli, a derogatory term for a religious fanatic. In some dialects, e.g. savo, it is common, rahu, or standard Finnish raha money in the partitive case. The distinction between d and d is found only in foreign words, natively d occurs only in the short form. While and j may appear as geminates when spoken e.g. vova u rajata ridge t this distinction is not phonemic and is not indicated in spelling in dialects or in colloquial finnish d and j can have distinctive length especially due to sandy or compensatory lengthening e.g. severin senverin kuvu kuva tijan tiden kajani kajani Topic phonotactics The phonemic template of a syllable in Finnish is CVC, in which C can be an obstruent or a liquid consonant. V can be as realized as a long vowel or a diphthong. A final consonant of a Finnish word, though not a syllable, must be a coronal one. Originally Finnish syllables could not start with two consonants but many loans containing these have added this to the inventory. This is observable in older loans such as Ranska. Topic. Consonant phonotactics Consonant phonotactics are as follows, word final consonants Only, t, s, n, r, l Glottal stop occurs almost exclusively at word boundaries, replacing what used to be word final consonants, k, and, h, word initial consonants Only, d, and cannot occur word initially except, d, in loan words, word initial consonant clusters only stop plus liquid combinations are allowed, which is a result of the influence of mostly post-World War II loanwords e.g. clinic. Clinic, plan tt Planet, word final consonant clusters None, except in dialects via vowel dropping. Word medial consonant clusters the following clusters are not possible in Finnish. Any exceeding three consonants except in loan words stop plus nasal labial stop plus non-labial stop non-dental stop plus semivowel nasal plus non-homorganic obstruent except nh nasal plus sonorant liquid plus liquid semivowel plus consonant Topic. Vowel phonotactics Vowel phonotactics are as follows, word final and word initial vowels Any of the vowels can be found in this position, vowel sequences Double, long vowels Usually only the vowels A, I, Y, U, are long. Sometimes the mid-vowels, E, O, O, can be long in cases of contraction. Diphthongs of the 17 diphthongs, 14 are formed from any vowel followed by a close vowel. The three exceptions are, uo, yo, i.e. Vowel combinations Approximately 20 combinations, always at syllable boundaries. Unlike diphthongs, the second vowel is longer, as is expected, and it can be open, or, a. Sometimes three to four vowels can occur in a sequence if a medial consonant has disappeared. Topic Prosody Topic Stress Stress in Finnish is non phonemic. Like Hungarian and Icelandic, Finnish always places the primary stress on the first syllable of a word. 
Secondary stress normally falls on odd numbered syllables. Contrary to primary stress, Finnish secondary stress is quantity sensitive. Thus, if secondary stress would normally fall on a light CV syllable but this is followed by a heavy syllable CVV, or CVC, the secondary stress moves one syllable further, to the right, and the preceding foot syllable group therefore contains three syllables. Thus, omenanani, as my apple, contains light syllables only and has primary stress on the first syllable and secondary on the third, as expected, omenanani. On the other hand, omenanam as our apple has a light third syllable na and a heavy fourth syllable nam, so secondary stress falls on the fourth syllable, omenanam. Certain Finnish dialects also have quantity-sensitive main stress pattern, but instead of moving the initial stress, they geminate the consonant, so that e.g. light heavy cv, cvv becomes heavy heavy cvc cvv, e.g. the partitive form of fish is pronounced kala in the quantity-insensitive dialects but kala in the quantity-sensitive ones cf, also the examples under the length section. Secondary stress falls on the first syllable on non-initial parts of compounds, for example the compound punama, meaning wooden face, from puu, tree, and nama, face, is pronounced pu -nm, but punama, meaning which was cleaned. Preceded by an agent in genitive, by someone, is pronounced pu -nm. Topic. Timing. Finnish is not really isochronic at any level. For example, hutelu shouting and huatelu flushing are distinct words, where the initial syllables huu and hua are of different length. Additionally, acoustic measurements show that the first syllable of a word is longer in duration than other syllables, in addition to its phonemic length long or short. Thus, there are four distinct phonetic lengths. Sandy. Finnish sandy is extremely frequent, appearing between many words and morphemes, in formal standard language and in everyday spoken language. In most registers, it is never written down, only dialectal transcriptions preserve it, the rest settling for a morphemic notation. There are two processes. The first is simple assimilation with respect to place of articulation e.g. np greater than mp. The second is predictive gemination of initial consonants on morpheme boundaries. Simple phonetic incomplete assimilations include n plus k, k, velarization due to k, e.g. sen kansa, se canes n plus p, mp, labialization due to p, e.g. menenpa, menempi v plus v, vv, dissimilation of a sequence of individual vowels compared to diphthongs by adding a glottal stop, e.g. kuorma auto, kuo, armtu, not obligatory gemination of a morpheme initial consonant occurs when the morpheme preceding it ends in a vowel and belongs to one of certain morphological classes. Gemination or a tendency of a morpheme to cause gemination is sometimes indicated with an apostrophe or a superscripted x, e.g. vene, ene. Examples of gemination Many nouns ending in e apart from some new loanwords e.g. hakalava, kel, open box bed for wood chips imperatives and conegative imperatives of the second person singular, as well as the negative form of the present indicative these three are always similar to each other e.g. asta vene, o, street een, by a boat conegative imperatives of the third person singular first person plural, second person plural and third person plural, alka tekakon sita, tekak ash n, actually, don't do it first infinitives the Dictionary form, e.g., tati mena kaman, tati men ake am ash n, noun cases in e, allative lle as well as the more marginal sublative nne as in tan and prolative ze as in post-it c, not the commutative, though. Some other words such as kai probably, luo to, towards a person or place, tai orth gemination can occur between morphemes of a single word as in, minil e, plus, kin, minil ek in, to me too, orthographically minilikin, between parts of a compound word as in, per he, plus, plary, perep lary, family meeting, orthographically peripalavary, or between separate words as in, tuli, plus, tan e, tulit an e, come here. In elaborate standard language, the gemination affects even morphemes with a vowel beginning, oat, plus, omen, oat omen, or otomen, take an apple. In casual speech, this is however often rendered as otomen without a glottal stop. 
These rules are generally valid for the standard language, although many southwestern dialects, for instance, do not recognize the phenomenon at all. Even in the standard language there is idiolectal variation disagreement between different speakers, e.g. whether colm should cause a gemination of the following initial consonant or not, colmarist or colm -rist three crows. Both forms occur and neither one of them is standardized, since in any case it does not affect writing. In some dictionaries compiled for foreigners or linguists, however, the tendency of geminating the following consonant is marked by a superscript X as in parex. Historically, morpheme boundary gemination is the result of regressive assimilation. The preceding word originally ended in h, or k. For instance, the modern Finnish word for boat vene used to be vena, a form still existing in the closely related Karelian language. At some point in time, these h, and k, s were assimilated by the initial consonant of a following word, e.g., vena kulkevi, the boat is moving. Here we get the modern Finnish form enik ulk orthographically vene kulki, even though the independent form een has no sign of the old final consonant, h. In many Finnish dialects, including that of Helsinki, the gemination at morpheme boundaries has become more widespread due to the loss of additional final consonants, which appear only as gemination of the following consonant, cf. French liaison. For example, the standard word for now NYT has lost its T and become NY in Helsinki speech. However, NY plus say now it does something is pronounced NYSE and not asterisk NYSE, although the latter would be permissible in the dialect of Turku. Similar remnants of a lost word final n can be seen in dialects, where e.g. the genitive form of the first singular pronoun is regularly mu, standard language minin, say, plus, on, plus, mu, seomu, it is mine. Preceding an approximant, the n is completely assimilated, mu jamo, my wife. Preceding a vowel, however, the n, however, appears in a different form, mu, plus, om, munam, or even moon om, my own. See also Finnish orthography Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>